The Pixel 9 series is fully revealed with a wave of interesting new hardware changes, but I think we can all agree AI was the main focus of the event. With so many newly announced AI powered features, I think it can definitely be a bit overwhelming to keep track of all of it, so today I figured it'd be very helpful for the community to break it all down in one easy to watch video. Of course, we have a lot more Pixel 9 coverage on the way, so if you find this useful, stick around and subscribe to the channel so you can stay in the know on all things Pixel. If you're a 9to5 Google Google channel member, which we greatly appreciate y'all by the way, don't forget to grab the new wallpaper pack for August called Metal, and if you want these for yourself, hit the join button down below because we'd certainly love to have you. First up, let's talk about the big changes with the Gemini Assistant. From what we saw at the Google Keynote and various blog posts, Gemini is officially the default voice assistant on Pixel 9 devices. Whether it's truly ready to replace Google Assistant is a whole topic for another video, but it's clear Google is pushing Gemini pretty hard this year. With that initiative comes a few new upgrades like extensions for Google Calendar, Tasks, Keepnote, and Utilities, which are basic device controls like flashlight, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and more, all of which are highly requested. Plus, YouTube Music is getting a new series of prompts where you can create a playlist by asking for a specific style or mood. We're also expecting deeper integrations for Google Home, phone, and messages at some point in the future. All of this, and as announced at Google I.O. in May, the Gemini floating overlay while inside an application is now live on the 9 series, whereas on older versions, it would open the full screen UI to deliver answers, so now you don't have to actually leave the app you're in to ask Gemini a question, which is awesome. Thankfully, if you're still not a fan of Gemini, which is okay, or if there are some personal features that are missing in your workflow, you can still fall back on the tried and true Google Assistant if needed. If you're a Gemini Advanced member, you can look forward to a new way to interact with Gemini Live. I've actually been using this on my Pixel 8 Pro for the past few days, and I think it works pretty great. In practice, Gemini Live functions as a natural conversation-like experience with Gemini, allowing users to have a free-flowing back-and-forth chat. I like that you can interrupt in mid-sentence and switch topics in mid-conversation, and at the end of your interaction, you can pull up a written history. As a daily Gemini user, I'm excited to fit this into my workflow as it can be kind of annoying to have to use voice prompts or manually type my prompts as opposed to having a quick back and forth exchange, so definitely expect a full video on this in the future. And by the way, if you plan on getting the Pixel Buds Pro 2, you will be able to use Gemini Live hands-free, which seems pretty cool in concept, but I'll have to try it out. Next up is Pixel Studio, and we did briefly cover this in our hands-on. For those who don't know, this is a Pixel 9 exclusive app that allows users to generate images from text prompts powered by an on-device diffusion model and Google's Imagine 3 cloud-based model. Until we get some more hands-on time, it's hard to say how useful this will be, but it does have an easy-to-use interface for inputting prompts or editing the images, and they can be shared through messaging and email. Pixel Screenshots is another app exclusive to the Pixel 9 series where it can help save, organize, and recall important information from your screenshots saved on device using natural language queries or keywords. When you have a screenshot pulled up, the app is able to pull relevant context from Google Search to give a complete picture. For example, if you screenshot a specific restaurant, it could show you the address, reviews, or directions. Additionally, if you take a screenshot of a specific product, the app can provide prices or shopping links whenever you pull it up again in the future. Or if you screenshot a recipe, you can find additional context or the ingredients needed to complete that dish. To me, this is a genuinely useful implementation of AI, and I hope we see much more features like this in the future, as it makes my life a lot easier, plus I'm assuming many of you guys. And the more that we get these useful AI features, I think the higher opinion people will have of AI implementation as a whole. Google also gave us some insight to the new call notes feature, which we heard minor whispers about prior to launch. This feature uses AI to automatically transcribe and summarize phone calls, allowing you to review the entire conversation at a later time, useful for if you're having discussions with a lot of details, like maybe a doctor's appointment or a parent-teacher meeting or some kind of traveling event, let's say. Thankfully, this is done entirely on AI for privacy reasons, and it does notify all parties when the feature is active, which is nice. The only thing we know right now is it isn't available in all countries or languages, so we'll have to follow up on that. 
Add Me is another AI feature we talked about quite a bit already, so I'll be quick. But Add Me is one of Google's most marketed features where you can take a group photo while also getting the photographer involved. It works by taking a photo of a small group of people, then using an AR overlay, it lines up the shot where the photographer steps in for a second picture, then AI will stitch the two images together. It could be useful if you're in a touristy area, let's say, and don't feel comfortable handing your phone off to a complete stranger. Magic Editor is another AI power tool that receives some updates, including an auto frame feature that suggests crops or expansions with generative fill and has a prompt based reimagine with query where you can request certain edits like changing backgrounds or straight up adding new objects or elements to photos like you can with Adobe's generative fill AI tool. During Google's live demo, the results look pretty cool, so I'm pretty interested to try this out. Moving on to the rest of the AI features, we have received a brand new Pixel Weather app. The app looks like it takes a lot of data from the Google search widget and adds some material you elements sprinkled in, but the AI feature we can look forward to is generated weather reports powered by Gemini Nano. These will be positioned right at the top of the app for easy access and will give you a quick overview of the day's weather, along with specific details like changes in humidity, UV index, and air quality, and will tell you when to expect those changes. Looking past the Pixel 9 series for a bit, there were some other Google products that received some AI upgrades I wanted to mention real quick. The Pixel Watch 3 can now use AI to detect if a user's pulse suddenly stops beating and can automatically connect with emergency services if needed. Additionally, the Pixel Watch 3 also has enhanced running metrics using machine learning to give you a comprehensive breakdown of your running form, cadence, stride length, and height, plus ground contact time. Recently, I picked up jogging as a side hobby, so I'm excited to see how this turns out when I get some quality time with the software. And lastly, the Pixel Buds Pro 2 has some AI features as well, like the ability to channel Gemini Live, as I said earlier, and with the new Tensor A1 chip inside, it does get improved noise cancellation thanks to the use of AI algorithms. Google says it adapts to the user's environment up to 3 million times per second and cancels out twice as much noise as the previous generation Buds Pro, so I'm excited to test that out when the time comes. Trust me, I know that was a lot of features, but I'm 99.9% .9 sure that is every new AI feature announced at this past Google event. There's certainly a lot, and personally, I don't expect everyone will use all the features. For me, I'm excited to consistently use Gemini Live as I use Gemini every day, some way, somehow. Pixel screenshots seems genuinely useful as my screenshot library gets bigger and bigger. Reimagine with Magic Editor, I do want to play around with as there's a lot of potential for fun there. AI weather summaries, I see myself using consistently, and the enhanced running metrics on the Pixel Watch 3, I also have a pretty big interest in. Everything else I might not use much, if at all, which is fine, but let me know what you think will be actually useful in your everyday workflow. I know everyone uses their phone differently, so it'll be intriguing to see what people are gravitating to, so please leave a comment and let me know your thoughts. In the meantime, I'm getting out of here, but before I do, huge shout out to our channel members on screen right now, and thank you so much for supporting our work as Pixel season starts to kick off. We've been getting great feedback on the wallpaper packs, and trust me, there's a lot more on the way. With that said, this has been Jordan Floyd with 9to5Google. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.